let's face it, nobody likes Google reCAPTCHA. I'm tired of clicking on the stop signs. I'm tired of clicking on the boats. I'm tired of clicking on the parking meters. Everybody knows it by now, but Google's reCAPTCHA is a terrible user experience. And if you've spent any time on the internet at all, you know just how frustrating it can be to fill out these Google reCAPTCHAs that are just everywhere at this point. But that's not the only problem with Google's reCAPTCHA. As you know, Google is an ad company, and so they collect all kinds of personal data about all of their users, and they basically follow their users around the internet trying to collect whatever possible data they can get about them. And if you put Google reCAPTCHA on your website, I'm sure that you know that it is a privacy nightmare. It's going to collect a whole bunch of data about your users and phone back to Google. And even though Google says that they don't use any of the data that they collect from reCAPTCHA for targeted advertising, Google is still an ad company and I don't want to give them any more data than I need to. I just find the whole thing extremely creepy. But if you've ever run a website before, then you can probably understand why a lot of people use Google reCAPTCHA. And it is true that a ton of people use it. It is basically 98% of the market share right now as far as CAPTCHAs go. And so if you're running a website and you're having problems with spam bots, maybe there's a bunch of spam bots in the comments section, or maybe you're getting spammed with fraudulent orders if you have an e-commerce website. Those are both things that have happened to clients of mine. Then Google reCAPTCHA seems like a pretty obvious choice. Because let's face it, Google reCAPTCHA is free and it's very easy to set up. And there are more private alternatives to reCAPTCHA, but they either have the same really bad user experience where you have to click on a whole bunch of stupid icons or they cost money. You have to pay a monthly subscription to use them. And most businesses don't have unlimited resources, so you probably just want to go with the free option. But I recently came across this alternative to Google reCAPTCHA called Cloudflare Turnstile. And this is basically going to be a drop-in replacement for Google's reCAPTCHA, but without all of the downsides. So you don't get the same awful user experience most of the time, you don't even have to click on anything. It will just automatically verify it for you. And if you don't even want to have this checkbox, then you can just completely make it invisible and just have it work in the background. And you're not going to have the same data privacy issues as using Google. Now, do keep in mind that Turnstile is not open source, so you can't actually go into the code and see what it's doing. So you basically have to just trust Cloudflare that they're not doing anything with the data that they're collecting. They kind of have just a trust me bro situation going on. And so you basically do have to trust them that they're not doing anything. But maybe it's just me, but I find it much easier to trust something like Cloudflare rather than an advertising company. And sure, there are completely free and open source CAPTCHA solutions, but they're either very difficult to set up or they just have a really bad user experience. And so for most normal people that just want to set up a website and not have to worry about all that stuff, I think this is a really good solution. I've already had some success with it. I have moved a client from Google reCAPTCHA to using this with great results. So they're getting the same spam protection that they always have without compromising on their user's privacy. So in this video, I'm just going to go over how to set this up. I'm gonna give a basic example of how you can use it. But this is already seeing a lot of adoption and there are a lot of implementations that are already out there. So if you have a WordPress website, there is a great free WordPress plugin that you can use. If you're using React or some other framework like that, there are already components that you can bring into your project and just use it that way. And if you're also migrating from Google reCAPTCHA, then it makes it very easy to swap it out. The APIs are very similar. So it's not going to be some huge hassle in order to do this. But let's just get into how to set this up. So first things first, you'll wanna sign up for a Cloudflare account if you don't already. You just go to cloudflare.com and sign up. And once you're inside, you're going to get a dashboard like this. And Turnstile is going to be over here on the left sidebar. And you're just going to want to click Add Site and then fill out all this information here. So I just put in the name of my website here and then put in the domain right here. And finally, you can select the widget type. So you can choose whether you want the checkbox to be shown to visitors or just run completely in the background. And worst case scenario, if the traffic is a little bit suspicious, then they will have to click the checkbox and verify that they're not a robot, but it's not going to pop up any challenges for them to solve. No clicking on stop signs, so you don't have to worry about that. It'll just spin for a little bit and then they can go through. So in most cases, you'll want to just click managed. And I've already created this, so let me just open this up already. And once you add a website, then you will get 
a couple of keys. You will get the site key. You will get the secret key right here. And you'll also get this code that you can copy and paste into your application. So let's go ahead and do all that. I have this little demo right here where you can fill in your email address, submit the form, and we have the Cloudflare turnstile right here. Just making sure you're not a robot. And so first off, let's go into the HTML. And what I have here is I have the script pasted into the header. And all that you really need to add in the front end is just a div here with a class of cf-turnstile and the data-site key of whatever the site key is. That's going to be this right here. And so you would just paste that into this attribute right here. And that's all you need to do for the front end. Now this should be displaying fine. And if you chose the widget type as invisible, then this will just not appear and it will run in the background. But we also need to add some code to the back end, of course. So we have this API route called verify. And whenever the form is submitted, then turnstile will add this field called cf-turnstile-response. And what this will have is a token. And what we need to do with this token is we need to send it to this URL right here. We need to send a post request to this URL. And the form data that we need to post to this URL is going to be the secret key. And I have the secret key up here in a variable. But of course, you want to keep this key secret. You want to keep it safe. Never expose it in the front end or anything like that. But we're just sending in the secret key and then the token as secret and response respectively. And once you send this in, then it will return back this result. And it will either return success if the user is not actually a robot or it will return an error if something went wrong. Maybe something suspicious is going on or something else. But we can try this out by just clicking join the waiting list. As we can see, it has now returned success true. So that is working as expected. We have passed the test. We're not a robot. That's good to know. And that's basically all there is to it. And of course, if I was to submit this without waiting for this to finish, then it gives us a success of false telling us we have a missing input response. So all you would need to do is handle these errors on the front end, and it's as simple as that. But while you're developing this, you definitely want to check out the turnstile docs. I'll leave a link to this in the description. But this has some demo API keys that you can use for testing. And so if you want to test various states, like it always passes or it always fails, then you can swap in these keys right here. And just so you know how the worst case scenario looks, if the traffic is a little bit suspicious, let me just put in this API key on the front end. And then if we go back here and reload this, and worst case scenario, you're going to have to click this checkbox here and verify you are human. But nothing's going to pop up. It's just going to spin for a little bit, and then you can proceed like normally. So that's working correctly. And that's just the most basic implementation of that. And a couple of other nice features is that it is going to be more lightweight than Google reCAPTCHA as well. So we can just reload this and see how much JavaScript is bringing in. So it's about 200 kilobytes of script. And for my test, Google reCAPTCHA was at least double that. So it will be a little bit faster and more performant. And you only really have to include all this code on a page with a form. You don't have to put the code on every single page like I believe Google reCAPTCHA has you do. And one more little bonus, it also comes with analytics. So if you want to see what percentage of the time that people are actually passing this, you can go in here and see the statistics. Maybe, I don't know, you want to see if you're getting hit with a bunch of bots. And so you can see if the requests are going up. You can see the data over different days. You can see the past week. So that could be something useful to you as well. And of course, you can do more with this. I'll leave a link to the documentation so you can take a look at that but everything that you'll need to know is going to be inside here. And so I find Turnstile to be the best solution for most people. And so maybe you're working for a client and they want to implement reCAPTCHA. I'm sure you could talk them into using Cloudflare Turnstile instead. And of course, for your own websites, I think it is a good solution as well. I'll leave a link to a GitHub with all this code in the description as well. So you can copy and paste some of this into your own project, make it a little bit easier. But hopefully you can give Turnstile a try in your own projects and your users will never have to click on another stop sign ever again.